I just gave you. So we're now going to only concentrate on the hypothesis testing when the population standard deviation is known. And when it's known, we know that we're using a z-test and our test statistics is our sample mean minus our population mean divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Refresh. We need to state our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. State what we are given in terms of the level of significance, our sample size. Determine what type of uh, test statistics we're doing. I know in this instance we're doing a Z test. Find the critical value. So depending on the type of a question that we'll get, I should know when I state my null hypothesis and my alternative, whether I am going to do a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test in order for me to know which area of rejection will I create in terms of the critical value. Then I will calculate my test statistic. Once I have my test statistic, I will make a decision and then conclude. Let's look at an example. Test the claim that the manufacturing bulk mean diameter of a manufacturer is state. In this instance, they don't tell me that it's bigger than or it's less than or greater than, so they just say it's state. So therefore, it means it is equal. Assume that the population standard deviation is 0, 0,8. Now they told me they have given me population standard deviation, so therefore, it is no, my alpha is 0, 0,05, therefore my level of significance is 0, 0,05, my n is 100. Step number one, state null hypothesis and alternative. My mean is equal to 30. My mean in my alternative, my mean is not equal to 30. Immediately, light bulb moment, this is a two-tailed test. It makes it easy to identify that because then I know that I will have to find my critical value by dividing alpha by two, and I will have two regions of rejection. Step number two, specify what you are given. Alpha is 0, 0,05, N is 100. Determine the appropriate technique, I am doing a z-test because my population standard deviation is known. Determine the critical values. Now, with the critical value, remember I'm given alpha 0, 0,05 like we did yesterday. If it's alpha 0, 0,05 to find the critical value, it's z alpha divided by 2 and it's then it will be z uh, z 0, 0,05 divided by 2, which then gives z of 0, 0,0250. And we go to the table. And when we get to the table, we look for 0, 0,0250 in the table. We go out and out from the table. And on this side, we will see 1.9. And at the top, we'll see 0, 0,06. And that will be our critical value. I'm not going to go to the table, just showing you. Remember that. And that will be our critical wave, which is 1,96. Step number five, calculate the test statistic. I know I'm given N, I'm given standard deviation, I'm told what the population means, uh, standard deviation is. Substitute into the formula. My sample mean is 29.84 minus 30. 30 is always in the hypothesis testing. In your null hypothesis, that's the way they have given 30. Remember, the mean bold is 30. That's our population mean. Divide by the standard error of 0,08. 
0, 0,8 divided by the square root of 100, which gives us minus 0, oh, sorry, minus 2, 0. And that's my test statistic. Now I need to make a decision based on my critical value. Remember now, I know that I'm doing a two tail test, so it means I have two regions of rejection. I have minus 1.96 and I have on this side, we have 1.96. So I'm going to take this value and see where does it fall between in those region of rejection or it falls inside the white area. For me, it is easy to use the graph than to use the weights because the weights like if my my test statistic, and that is what the weight states in your decision. My Z stat, if it's greater than my positive Z, Z stat, then we reject the null hypothesis. Or if my Z stat, if it's less than my negative Z stat, then I reject my null hypothesis. Alternatively, I do not reject the null hypothesis. Remembering all this is a nightmare. Creating a table that looks like this, just uh, a graph that looks like this and putting your critical values there and identifying them and shading the other side that where the critical values are makes it easy and say this side is my do not reject, oh sorry, my reject area, reject area. This is my do not reject area. Then I go and find the value because that's what uh, the, the decision state. Then I go and locate my minus 2.0. And I find that my two, my minus 2.0 falls in the, on the reject area. So we, since it falls in the rejection area, we can conclude by saying, since the Z state, of minus two is less than 1.96, minus 1.96, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is sufficient evidence that the mean diameter of the manufactured bolt is not equal to eight. Any questions? No questions. Okay, let's do another example. If in a sample of n equals to 30, or oh, n equals to 20 selected from a normal population, the sample mean of 58, the population standard deviation of 12, and there is my key population standard deviation of 0, 0,1 of, of 12, then it means my population standard deviation is given. Suppose that the e tutor wants to test the following hypothesis. The mean is equal to 55. The alternative, the mean is not equal to 55. So in this instance, they have given me the null hypothesis and my alternative hypothesis. So they did my step number one for me. At the 5% level of significance, which one of the following statement is incorrect? Before I look at which statement is incorrect on this, I can start by going through all the steps that I know. So I know that my step one is done. Step number one is done. And by looking at my alternative, this is a two tail test. Step number two, state what I am given. I am given alpha of 0, 0,05. I am also given n, and my n is equals to 20. Um, then I know my population standard deviation is known. Is known 
Therefore, I'm doing a Z statistic. I'm doing a Z test. Step number four, I must find the critical value. Z, it's a two-tailed test. So it's alpha divided by two. I don't have to go and go find it because I know if it's alpha divided by two and that means it's 0, 0, 0,0250, therefore it's 1,96. By now, I should know it by heart. And when it's 5%, the level of significance, then it's 1,96. Step number five, calculate your Z, which is sample mean minus population mean, divide by my standard error, which is the standard deviation over the square root of n. So substitute into the formula, our mean, our mean, they told us it was sample mean is 58. And that is 58. That is our x bar. And this is our n, and this is our sigma. Our population mean it's always in the hypothesis testing, in your null hypothesis or alternative. Doesn't matter where you're taking it from. It's 55. Divide by my standard error, which is standard deviation, which is 12. Divide by the square root of n. So I can go outside and calculate my 12 divided by my square root of n, which is my standard error. My standard error, which is square root, uh, standard deviation over the square root of n, which is 12 divided by n. And if I calculate that, I, I decided today I'm going to have a calculator open. Okay, so our uh, our n is 20. I should have replaced n with 20. So we can do that. Uh, my calculator is very clever. I can do fractions so that I don't have to suffer. Divide by 20. Uh, am I substituting right? No, I'm not. It's 12. Divide by. Oh, not divide by. Divide by square root of 20 equals uh, um, I need to write it down somewhere. It's correct, ma'am. Uh, it's two point. Six eight three two. I am going to, to to do the whole calculation for Z. Our Z is fifty eight minus fifty five divided by twelve divided by the square root of twenty equals 1,118033. So, okay. So, I know what my standard error is. Uh, for some reason, I cannot change. square root of 20 and that gave me 2 comma 6 8 3 to 8 6 sorry it gave 6 
2,68328. Correct. Okay. Which yeah, I just need to change this to 20. Okay, and we calculated this and we found that it is 1,11833. Okay. So now I can come and answer the question or I can make a decision, but I can see here step number six, make a decision. This is a two tail, so it means I have two areas of rejection, which is my Z. Uh, I don't even have to write Z because I know my critical value is minus 1,96 on this side, and on this side is positive 1,96. I look at my test statistics, is 1.96. 1.11, where does it fall? So 1.11 falls somewhere. I'm just going to assume that it falls there. This is 1,1180. So therefore, it means it falls in the do not reject. So my result will be we do not, do not reject. Okay, so now let's go to our question. This is the incorrect one. Two-tail test is used. Yes, it is a two-tail test. The standard error is 2,683.68 uh, because if I round this one, it will be 6833. Yes, that's correct. The test statistics is 1,1180. Yes, it's correct. My critical value was 1,96. Yes, it's correct. Do I reject the null hypothesis? I do not reject. That is incorrect. As you can see, all six steps are covered in one question. And that's what you will get even when you write the exams. With that, here is your exercise. And you are more than welcome uh, between now and one o'clock to do this one exercise and take a, a break a break and then we will see each other at one o'clock exactly one o'clock Sorry, I need to bring, oh gosh, come on. Sorry, sorry about that.
Okay. Are you guys back? Do we have yes. an answer? Do we have the answer? Let's see, one by one, we go through the statement one by one. Okay, so in the statement, they say Botalis, a practicing statistician, is tasked with the investigating whether the population mean of a random variable X is different from 100. Since they're not saying it is bigger than or it is less than, we can assume that that is equals. She has the following additional information to help her with the investigation. Alpha, which is the level of significance, is 0 0,01. Your population standard deviation is 3. Your sample mean is 99, and your sample size is 100. Consider the statement A until E below and then state which one of this statement is correct so let me hear from you a is it is a correct how they stated it the null hypothesis should be equal to 100 against the the alternative that is not equal is this correct i'll say it's correct Yes, this is correct. Number two. Is the statement correct based on the information that we just read? Is B correct? No. B is not correct because of that less than sign we know that the statement said it's not different so it means it should be equal the level of significance is 0 0,01 is this correct yes is correct because alpha is 0 0,01 a test a z statistic is applicable in this Is this a Z test or is it a T test exercise? Uh, statistics Z is, it, is, D, is D correct? Yes. D is correct because a population standard deviation is given. Therefore, E will not be correct. So you should be able to choose which one is the correct statement on this. So which one will be correct is only A, C, C and D. D. That was an easy exercise to do actually. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, sometimes when we do the Z test, we can also use the p-value to do the test that is to make conclusion, okay, to, to make the conclusion. So we can use the p-value remember the previous session that we used we used the critical value so we use the critical value to make a decision now i'm saying you can also use a p value to make the decision so when you make a decision with the p value it will state that if the p value is less than alpha you reject the null hypothesis otherwise if it's more than that 
if it's greater than or equals to the p-value, you do not reject the null hypothesis. So if p is smaller, you reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is smaller, you reject the null hypothesis. It is very, very important to know how to find the p-value. Based on your null hypothesis and your alternative, based on the alternative, which is the two-tailed test, your p-value will be the value you go find on the table by using your z statistic value. So we take the z stat, we go look for the probability on the table the same way as we have been doing in the normal distribution and also in the sampling distribution. It's the same concept. So you will have calculated your z statistic using that formula. Then you will go into the Z cumulative standardized normal distribution table and use the Z values and go find the probability inside the table. Here is the tricky part now. When it's a two tail area, the Z value that you're going to get, you are going to get it. If it's Let's start from here. So the p-value, if the z, let's put it this way, if the z value is positive, you are going to say one minus the value you find on the table. If it's negative, you are going to use the value on the table. This is only applicable for a two-tailed test. I hope you, you are hearing me and understanding me very clear here. If your Z state is positive, you're going to use one minus the value you find on the table, which is your p-value value on the table. If the Z is minus or it's negative, then your p-value will be the value you find on the table. Maybe probably I should not say p-value will be the value you find on the table. Let's say you will find the value of on the table. Let's put it this way so that you don't get confused. Then what you for you to get the p-value, you have to multiply that value by two. So you will have to say whatever value you find on the table, you have to multiply it by two. Whether you say one minus the table value, that table, that value you answer you get from there, you will have to multiply it by two. I hope I make myself clear. When it's one-sided test, whether it's less than or whether it's greater than, the Z value that you will find on the table will be given by if it's greater than, the same way, if it's greater than, we go and find one minus the table value. If your Z is less than, that will be the value on the table. And that will be your p value, and that will be your p value. I hope I make myself clear. If it's a two tail area to find the p value, you're going to look at the sign you get on the z test value. If it is positive, oh, maybe I should I should not say if it is positive, like like what I'm when I, yes. If your Z statistic is positive on the on only on the two tails on the two tail on the two tail uh, hypothesis. If your answer is positive, 
you are going to have to say one minus the value you find on the table. But if it's negative, your Z value is negative, you're going to use that value you find on the table. But that value you will have to multiply it by two so that you get the two P values. Because it's a two sided area. And then the P value will then say the value after you've multiplied it by two, you'll say your P value, if it's less than alpha, you reject. But if it's one sided test, the value you find on the table for a greater than, you have to subtract it from one. The same way as we have been doing with the normal, normal distribution and also with the sampling distribution. If it's less than, then the p-value will be the, that value you find on the table. So let's look at an example. I'm not going to repeat all the steps because we know the steps. So I'm just showing you that. Also, when we do the hypothesis testing and we make a conclusion with the p-value, the same steps will apply. You will need to know your null hypothesis and alternative. You state what you are giving. Your alpha is very important in this instance. You need to know that which test you're doing. And this is only applicable for only the Z test. If it's T test, they will never ask you to calculate the p-value or make a decision using the p-value. Then you need to calculate your Z statistic. Once you have calculated, whether you do for the proportion or you do for the mean, once you have calculated your test statistic, then you can use the test statistic as your Z score and go find the probability on the table. And then you make your decision. Okay, let's look at an example. Same example that we had, we stated the null hypothesis and the alternative. We uh, stated what we are given. We know that we did the Z test and this is what we got. We calculated our Z test. You remember that? Just repeating what we just did. Since this test is a two-tailed test and we have a negative a z of negative 2,0, we need to go to the table on the um, on the z table. Let's go there. We'll go find the minus 2 comma. Oh, come on. I cannot. Uh, and no. Okay, let's go there. Remember, we're looking for uh, two comma minus two point zero. So on this. On the Z table, the cumulative, you can see I'm on the cumulative standardized normal distribution table. 2.0, it will be there because at the top, it's also 0, 0, 0. So the P value I find is 0, 0,0228. And you will notice. So if I take, I think my PC is slow. It's not responding quicker. I'm just going to go back there. Remember I said if the value of a two tail, if it is negative, so we have 2,00. Because it's negative, the value we find on the table, which is 0, 0,0028, we just multiply that by 2. O is the same as 0, 0,028 plus 0, 0,028. It's one and the same thing. You will get the same answer. That's what um, it refers to. So now, when we go to the table, we go find that value. It was 0, 0,028. But we need to find the p-value. So we add together or we can say 0, oh I, I wrote that one wrong there it's 0, 0,0228 so we multiply that 0, 0,0228 by 2 or we can add both of them and the answer we get is 
zero comma zero four five six. And with that, we can conclude that that is less than alpha. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's how you use your alpha values, your p-value. Suppose that the p-value in a one-tail test is 0, 0,092. Based on the same population, the sample and the null hypothesis, the p-value for the corresponding two tail will be. So if they give us that value, and they tell us that is a one tail. For a two tail test, the p value will be equals to 0, 0,092 multiplied by 2, which will give us 0 0.0092 0, times 2 equals. 0, 0,0184. And that would have been the correct answer. I don't expect you to do the, the exercise. Uh, we need to go and do the other the other part. So for example, like on this one, they will ask you. So this is different questions. So they give you the statement. They ask you to calculate the test statistic and the next question they ask you what is the p-value so once you calculate the test statistic then you can go and find the p-value because the answer you get for the test statistic will give you the value for your alpha your p-value you can do that on your own um i just need to move to the next segment where we look at